Professor Giles Aldroyd. I work at the Doninus Centre and my work is funded by the BBSRC and by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So I work on nitrogen fixation in legumes, which is a group of plants, mostly peas and beans, that associate with a nitrogen fixing bacteria that uh, promotes nitrogen fixation in the roots. We use a lot of nitrogen fertilizers to promote plant growth in agriculture. And currently we have a population of about 7 billion people. It's estimated that the natural nitrogen cycle can accommodate uh, only about 3 billion people on the planet. So we're already at about 4 billion people dependent on the application of inorganic fertilizers. We apply an awful lot of uh, inorganic nitrogen in, in agriculture. It's very soluble and when we spray it on our fields, which we do repeatedly through a growing season to promote crop growth, a lot of that fertilizer does get into the crop, but quite a lot of it also escapes into the environment. And it mo mostly escapes by um, when it rains, it, it, it's, it's soluble, it washes into our rivers and streams, it gets into our groundwater. So it's polluting our groundwater. Um, so we're, we're generally drinking a lot of nitrates in our groundwater, but it's also getting into our river streams and shallow seas. And there it causes massive algal blooms and collapses in the biodiversity of those systems. These are systems that are not normally high in nutrients and when you put a lot of nutrients into those systems, you get massive uh, overproduction of biological uh, things like algae and microorganisms. Legumes, which are peas and beans, have um, evolved a beneficial interaction with nitrogen-fixing bacteria. These are bacteria that are free living in the soil and they associate with the legume roots. The bacteria have, a, have the unique capability to fix atmospheric nitrogen, which is molecular dinitrogen. They convert it into ammonia. Uh, they have this enzyme called nitrogenase and it's only bacteria that have that enzyme. No other organisms on the planet can use molecular dinitrogen, which is the predominant form of nitrogen. Um, so the bacteria convert um, molecular dinitrogen into ammonia and ammonia is a form of reactive form of nitrogen that plants and other organisms can use. So the legumes have got around this problem of limiting uh, nitrogen availability by forming this beneficial interaction with nitrogen fixing bacteria. What we're attempting to do is to transfer the nitrogen fixing capability from legumes to cereals. This is a big challenge, it's a, a very aspirational, but we're on the first steps of that process. And what we're focusing on is the, as a signal transduction pathway that's present in legumes that allows a recognition of nitrogen fixing bacteria. So the bacteria release a signaling molecule called nod factor and the plant recognizes that signaling molecule using, using the signal transduction pathway. And cereals have that same signaling pathway, um, the cereal crops that we're trying to engineer, they have this what we call the symbiosis signaling pathway because that pathway is involved not only in nitrogen fixing um, symbioses but it's also involved in other beneficial uh, interactions with fungi and so cereals have that signaling pathway but legumes in legumes it's unique in having a bifunctionality so it accommodates it facilitates the accommodation of both the nitrogen fixing bacteria and the mycorrhizal fungi whereas in cereals it only functions in a mycorrhizal fungal context and so what we're trying to do is to engineer that signaling pathway in cereals to be a bifunctional signaling pathway analogous to its role in legumes and we hope that this is really a first step towards engineering nitrogen fixing bacteria by essentially transferring the capability to recognize the nitrogen fixing bacteria to cereal crops. Science is a is hypothesis driven. We don't know the answers in science. Um, you have to think about the problems that you have and uh, think about the hypotheses that explain some of those problems. And we, we started with one hypothesis. We actually found out quite a lot of interesting science in that exploration, but we were trying to understand where specificity resided in this, in this signal transduction pathway. And we thought it might reside in the structure of these calcium oscillations. And we were wrong in that hypothesis. We proved ourselves wrong when we, start, when we did the research. It's not to say that the um, we actually, as I said, we learned quite a lot in that process and learned a lot about how the signaling pathway works. But it, it seemed to be what we, for the research, pointed out that we were 
from an engineering perspective and wanting to engineer the cereals, it wasn't, the, the key players were not involved in the recognition of these calcium oscillations. It's just a continual exploration and um, when in science you're always putting out hypotheses and you're putting up hypotheses essentially to prove or disprove. Um, so it's not, I don't think it's a, uh, a negative thing to, to find that you, one of your hypotheses was actually wrong. Um, it's, it's, it's just the ongoing process of science and I think most people accept that science, I think it's when it's portrayed in the to the public is presented as if it's a all or nothing, a black or white. We know the answer, we don't know the answer. But actually, it's a continuously ongoing process where you're continually asking new questions, adapting your questions according to the knowledge that you have, and trying to design new hypotheses and new experiments that can address those questions. So it's a continuously evolving process and, uh, and one that involves many different people testing different hypotheses, some that prove right and some that prove wrong. The next generation of scientists have, have an advantage over me in that they have more time. <laughs> I think the, um, the uh, engineering nitrogen fixing cereals is a huge challenge. It's very aspirational. I hope that I can achieve it within my research career, but, I, but um, I, perhaps it's something that I will have to pass the baton on. I can do what I, I can achieve and then maybe it's uh, time to for somebody else to pick that up. Um, I do think it's possible to engineer nitrogen fixing cereals. It is one of the big aspirations in plant biology, um, but I don't underestimate the challenge of that. And it's so the young people coming in, they've they've got the opportunities. I think right now to take take it to a level of maturity to really see um, some of these solutions out in the field, really solving global problems. Um, but I also think, of course, fresh minds coming in, new ways of thinking about the problems, new ways of approaches, and of course, new technologies that just get us ever closer to, uh, to some of these aspirational goals in plant biology.